Let me show you the basics of Affinity Designer so you feel empowered to design with it. What is Affinity Designer? I'm pretty sure that if you clicked on this video, you already know what this software is about and what you can create with it. But for those of you who don't know what Affinity Designer is, is a graphic design software for Mac, Windows and iPad that you can use to create illustrations, logos, icons and more. It is comparable to other softwares like Adobe Illustrator and CorelDRAW. First thing we're going to learn is how to create and how to save a document. When you open Affinity Designer, you will see on top of the screen a menu and we're going to click where it says File. From here, then select New. This new document window will appear and from here you'll be able to select the document that you want to create. I'm going to go to the web category and I'm going to select Social Media Square Post, which is this one, and then hit Create. But if you want to create a document with a particular dimension, you can actually enter here the dimension of the width and the height. You can also select if you want your document to be in pixels or any other unit. And then you'll have some other options that you can manage from here. I'm just going to create this simple document. So social media square post and then create. We have created this new document, but we still need to save it. So let me just draw something quick here. Now we're going back to file on top of the screen, save, or you can also select save as. From here, you're going to give a name to your document and hit save. Let's say that you stopped working on your design and you closed Affinity. How do you reopen that document again? You're going to open the folder where you saved your document. So I saved it here and then I just simply need to double click on this document here and Affinity will open it. Another way to open your design is by having Affinity Designer opened. And from here, you're going to file, open, select your document and then hit open. By the way, this is the first Affinity tutorial on our channel as we create content mostly about Canva and AI tools. So I would love to hear from you if you want me to continue teaching you about Affinity Designer. Is there something in particular that you would like to learn? Let me know in the comments. Now I'm going to show you how to create lines in Affinity Designer, but before we start, I want us to reset our studio so we all see exactly the same thing on the screen and nobody get lost. We're going to the window option on top of the screen and from here we are going to open the studio menu and click reset studio. Now we should all see the same things on our screen and now let me delete this heart so we can start creating lines. We're going to start by using the vector brush tool. With this tool, you can trace brush like textures, but if you want to convert it to a regular trace, you can also do it. If you want to find some other brush textures, you can go to the brushes tab on the right hand side. And from here, you will have this menu that you can open and find some other textures like acrylics, dry media, engraving, washes, and so on. So the texture that I used here it is under pencils and it is called tilted ground pencil but let me show you a couple of other textures like for example a watercolor one so let me try this one here so you can see the difference let me try an ink one like this one and even though you are creating lines with textures you can convert them into a regular stroke so if you select your brush like texture line go to the stroke tab on the right hand side. From here you will see different styles and this line has the brush style but you can convert it to a stroke if you select this one here, solid line style. You can also adjust the width 
of your line and then you will have some other extra settings that you can adjust from here now let me delete these lines here because i want to show you some other two tools that you can use to create lines in affinity designer we have the pencil tool you can click on this pencil icon on the left panel or you can simply activate it by pressing the key n and you can start creating your lines and we also have the pen tool that you can activate by pressing the key p or by clicking on this icon on the left panel the pen tool works a little bit different because i cannot simply drag my mouse and create a line but with this one i will strategically create some nodes or anchors to create the curves on my line so i'm going to click one time to create a node and then i'm going to click and drag my mouse to create this curve so the difference between the pen and the pencil tool is that that with the pencil you can simply click and drag and it will automatically create the line for you and place these little nodes for you it will happen exactly the same if you are using the brush tool because you just need to click and drag and affinity will place the nodes for you as well so you see here all these little nodes on your line the pen tool will take you a little bit more of time to master it and to learn how to use it but it will help you out later on if you want to adjust or customize your lines now i want to mention that i'm a beginner at affinity designer as well so i understand what are some of the struggles that you might be facing at the moment one of them is that when i was creating my first set of lines i didn't understand how i was going to move them around so if i want to place this line a little bit down below how do you do it if you are working with any of these tools to create lines you cannot use them to move your line below so if you want to place your line in a different position on your page you are going to select this black arrow right here or you can also activate it by pressing v now by having this black arrow activated you'll be able to move your lines your illustrations or your objects around the page also once you select one of your lines you'll be able to resize them change the aspect or you can also rotate them you will see that when you select one of your lines there is one blue line with another node in here and when you hover your mouse on top of this node you will be able to click and drag your mouse to rotate your line now let me come back because i want to show you another trick in case that you want to resize your line but you don't want to change the aspect you're going to hold shift at the same time when you are decreasing or increasing the size of your line and as you can see it is keeping exactly the same ratio another thing that i was struggling with at the beginning is that let's say that i want to move these three lines at the same time i was selecting my lines and then trying to move them but I was not selecting them all at the same time and I didn't understand why what you need to do is to select the entirety of the lines until you see this blue line appearing that means that you have selected the element also pay attention to this little tag in here because it is telling you how many objects you have selected at the moment i have three objects selected but if i move my selection a tiny bit up i only have two objects selected which are these two lines above and it is because i haven't selected the entire line down below so if i want to have these three lines i need to select the three lines completely once you have your lines or your objects select them you can move them at the same time another way to select more than one element is by going to layers from here you'll be able to see all of the objects on your page so you just need to identify which are the elements or the lines that you want to select so you're going to click on one of the elements you want to select and then by holding Control or holding comment if you're using a mac you're going to click the other lines that you want to select so now i have these three lines selected and i can move them around 
Now we have learned how to move our elements from one position to another on our page using this black arrow, which actually is called the move tool. But what if you want to edit your trace? Let's say that I want to make this line a little bit more rounded and I want to change the shape of these curves. You're going to activate this white little arrow so you can click on this tool or simply hit the key A. This little white arrow it is called the node tool and when you select one of your lines or your traces with this white arrow you'll be able to see the nodes on your line and when you select one of these nodes and you move it you'll be able to adjust your line. With this tool you'll also be able to adjust these handles which are going to change the aspect of your curves. If you want to delete a section from your line, you can click on one of the nodes and hit delete. You can also delete nodes by selecting the node and hit delete. And if you want to bend one of your existing lines, you're going to bring this tool close to the blue line until you see this other perpendicular small blue line. And then you're going to click and drag your mouse to create a new curve. Another cool thing that you can do with this node tool is that if you have text on your design, I'm going to add here this text. I'm going to change the font really quick. Let's say Arial Black. And then I'm going to convert this text to curves. I'm going to select again the node tool and you can change the aspect of your text really really quick with this and create something quite unique now let me show you how to create shapes you're gonna see this little shape on the left panel you might see a different shape at the moment i see a star tool but when you click on this little arrow pointing down you will open this shape menu and select any other shape that you want to create i want you to pay attention to this section on your screen this toolbar because this one will look different depending on the shape that you will select so let's go with a rounded rectangle and i'm gonna click and drag to create my shape you will see a set of tools right here but what happens if i create a different shape like a star i'm gonna click and drag and you will see that i have a different set of settings so let me click on the move tool so i can select the rectangle now and if i select the star i will see something different let's say this time i want to create a heart and let's see again this toolbar so this is the heart this is the star and this is the rectangle what i like about using this shape tool is that you can change the aspect of your shapes really easily by using this toolbar so let's say that instead of having five points i want this star to have more i can simply click on this arrow to play around with this slider or type here a number so let's say that i want to have seven points hit enter i have my seven points or i can play with this slider and have more points on my star you can also play around with these other settings so let's say the inner radius you can shrink it down make it bigger and let's say this heart you can also play around with the spread let's say that i don't want to have a stroke i'm gonna click on this number and then select the no line style and now my heart doesn't have a line i can change the color of my heart so let's say that i want to have a very bright red another way to change the color on your shapes is by selecting your shape and then going to the color tab on the right hand side and from here you'll be able to change the color on the inside of your shape but you can also change the stroke color so at the moment i'm changing the color on the inside of my star but if i want to change the color on the stroke i need to click on this donut shape 
so I can bring it up and then I'll be able to change the color on the stroke. And I also want to mention something important about this toolbar here because you will be able to see something different if you are using any of these tools to create lines. So if you were to use a pen tool, you'll be able to adjust all of these settings right here. But if you use a pencil, it will look different. And if you are using a brush, it will also look different. So I do suggest that you play around with these tools right here using these three tools and see what kind of differences you will see on your lines. Now, let's say that your artwork is ready and you want to export it. You're going to file on top of the screen and then from here click on export. From here you can select from any of these document types. You can adjust the file settings if you want. You have some other advanced settings in here and then if you are ready simply click export. If you want to continue learning with us, remember to subscribe to our channel and also consider joining our membership where we have perks and exclusive educational content. I think that's it for this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!